Michael Brock had it all. Fame, fortune, family. And a drug habit that took him from Park Place to Park Bench. One man's story of addiction, this week on My Healthy Mind. Welcome to My Healthy Mind. I'm Elizabeth Atkins. It's estimated that 20 million adults in the United States have substance use disorder. Among substance abusing adults in the United States, a full 50%, that's 10 million people, also have co-occurring mental illness. Reaching for, for drugs and alcohol as a way to solve problems for yourself can result in you going down the slippery slope of causing all kinds of problems for not only yourself, but your family, your friends, your wife, your kids, and so forth. A lot of pain and suffering because of that. The story of Michael Brock is one of extreme highs and extreme lows. From A-list club performer, recording artist, living large, to broke, broken, and homeless. How did this happen? Drugs were always around. I mean, it, 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 music and drugs is like, you know, Love, sex, rock and roll, drugs. Simply lost my way. You use it long term to help yourself and now the long term side effects are you're now making yourself more depressed. And drugs take you away from yourself and they take you away from your spirit. And the result of that is, is that when you lose yourself into it, like Michael talked about, they lost his way. We lose our higher self and now we're operating on this lower self and then we start hating ourselves and we start feeling separate from other people, from society, from our family. We start feeling ashamed of ourselves, and you end up in this sort of downward spiral. But that's not where this story ends. Michael Brock, musician and former drug abuser, has taken his experiences and transformed them into something positive and lasting. Let's talk about it. Stress. Depression and severe mental illness can happen to anyone. Team Mental Health Services has been helping those struggling with these conditions in southeastern Michigan. Within 24 hours of reaching out to our team, members receive psychiatric evaluations and begin the necessary treatment for recovery. Towards the sixth court date, um, I finally stood up and said, I, I can handle this process the rest of the way. And it was all because of the motivation and encouragement I got from Team Mental Health staff. Team Mental Health Services, because we care and you can. Welcome to My Healthy Mind. A show that dares to talk about mental health matters that touch nearly every family. Each week you'll meet guests who share their stories, hear from local experts, and learn about resources that may help. And so I was in a committee meeting at the House of Representatives when I realized that my daughter had autism. We need to take the stigma away from mental health issues. No topics about mental health and wellness are off limits on our show. Let's talk about it on My Healthy Mind. These days what's going on is that you start out experimenting with a prescription drug like the opiate drugs and um, you get caught in a web where your brain now demands that you have it. Not just to get high, but to just be normal again. Welcome back to My Healthy Mind. Almost everybody knows someone or knows of someone who has ridden the roller coaster of drug abuse. We see it every week in the tabloids, stories of celebrities and everyday people whose lives have taken a tragic turn and end in crash and burn because of drug abuse and often underlying mental illness. Today we're delighted to speak with Michael Brock, someone who has not only survived a fierce battle with drugs and alcohol, but is now helping others on the road to recovery. My colleague, Michael Hunter, goes in depth. Today we're talking about drug addiction, drug abuse, and eventually recovery. Okay. Well, before we get to that, let's talk about you before all of that happened. Okay. Where are you from? I'm from Benton Harbor, Michigan. Benton Harbor is a, 
a small town with a big city uh, mentality. Crime and uh, drugs and things of that nature, but uh, two older brothers and an older sister. And life was fine until? My mom passed. Okay, yeah. tell us about that. Yeah, she passed away when I was 11 years old. I began to drink. And At 11? At the age of 11, the early age of 11, I drank and smoked weed. How does an 11 year old in Benton Harbor get alcohol? Um, I got it from my dad and my older brother. Describe alcoholism from an 11 year old's viewpoint. Well, that perspective comes from mourning, now I learned through therapy that mourning my mom's passing, I would uh, cover my sorrows with, with alcohol. What are your father and your siblings doing during this time? Are they recognizing it? Do they know what's going on? Actually, they're identifying with it because they were, my dad was drinking and my older brother and sister were drinking and doing drugs as well. So. It was just a normal thing growing up to smoke a joint, drink a 40, a half pint of liquor. And then I was introduced to powdered cocaine from one of my sister's associates who, who was a pimp. And this is all in high school? It's all in high school. Yet you made it to college, so you graduated high school. Yes, I did, 1983. With an addiction? You made it to college and went to Western University. Western Michigan, Western Michigan mm -hmm. University. Yep. And what happened there? Well, I had a full ride scholarship to Western Michigan University and um, met up with the interesting crew of people at Western Michigan University who dibbled and dabbled with uh, cocaine. And, we, and they decided to start cooking it up. Freebasing is what, what it's called on the streets. And uh, it's another form of smoking crack cocaine. It's all drugs. It takes away your dreams and your hopes and your potential. And that's what it did for me. i never forget we were in a competition, a vocal jazz competition in Spokane, Washington. They came to the dorm to pick me up. And I was so high and drunk that um, I didn't go on the competition. And that's really when my, um, um, like I said, my hopes and dreams and things of that nature started, started to fade. Well, Michael, you've definitely given us more insight into drug abuse and its path to addiction. We've sought out help for a better understanding about drug addiction and drug abuse and its correlation to mental illness from psychologist Dr. David Connell. So when you get into mental health issues, I have a number of people who have just really gotten off into alcohol, for instance, because it's a wonderful tranquilizer. They're so distraught about having anxiety that they can't explain to anybody about how awful they feel. They have to do something to bring it down. And so they reach for a couple of drinks. So the issue is if they got treated for their anxiety, then they probably wouldn't need to reach for that substance that's the only thing they know how to take as a way to help themselves. When we return, we'll hear from Michael Brock about how he found help and began his journey toward wellness. Set sold separately, batteries not included. The bottom that we talk about is not actually a bottom. It's a point of transition. It's a point of recognizing that I need to save myself. I need to get my life back. And it's different for each person. Welcome back to My Healthy Mind. 
We're talking about drug addiction and mental health with Michael Brock. Thank you, Mike. Michael, as we were listening to your story, mm -hmm. now we've arrived to college with you at Western Michigan. Yes. And music is a strong part of your life. Yes, it is. But drugs continue to be a strong part as well. Whew. Yes. But you were in the music industry. Were you singing professionally, amateurs? What was happening with you in music? I was singing professionally. I started uh, performing with a organization called Club Corporations of America. So the music industry has this draw and availability for drugs and alcohol. Yes. How did it make you feel when you were high or getting high? It made me feel really good, uh, especially at the beginning. But later on, because of therapy and because of that bottom that I hit, I learned that I really, I really wasn't feeling good. Did I hear you say you went from park place to the park bench? Yes, you did. And it's, it's very good that you brought that out, Mike, because doing drugs was because of low self-esteem, was because of a, a lack of, of support. I didn't feel like I could do the things that I was doing, like uh, being on stage and performing for all these different stars and uh, being uh, so successful. I was afraid of success. But that was Park Place. That was Park Place, exactly. And Park Bench was <laughs> downtown Detroit in, uh, in the Cass Corridor where I ended up. And how'd you end up there? What happened? Um, I stole a check uh, in North Carolina. And so now you've been to jail. Mm -hmm. You're not on top anymore. Mm -hmm. You're stealing. Yes. Did I hear also that you were beaten or something like that? Oh yeah, I got in a few fights um, because of my alcoholism and drugs. I never forget being down at Hart Plaza after stealing drugs from a young drug dealer. Uh, well, his counterparts or his posse or whatever saw me in downtown Detroit and they said, there he is right there. Of course, they gave me a, a, a whooping and um, uh, that's when I decided, hey, enough is enough. You know, I'm gonna try and get in rehab and turn my life around. And did you get into rehab? Yes, I did. I went to the Salvation Army of Harbor Light on Park Street. Okay. And, um, you know, it, it, this was 27 years ago. Uh, my clean date is 9-14-88. And when I went into uh, the Salvation Army of Harbor Light, I, and my mind tells me, you know, you stop using at an early age. Maybe you're not an addict. Maybe you're not addicted to drugs. Maybe you can drink again. I can't have a glass of wine at dinner. I can't uh, smoke cigarettes. I can't uh, smoke weed because I am a recovering addict and alcoholic. What do you attribute your success to for maintaining recovery all of these years? Ooh, God first and foremost. The fellowship, um, Alcoholics Anonymous, Narcotics Anonymous, the literature, uh, my relationships with uh, my sponsor and friends. We looked at addiction from the eyes of that 11 year old. And now here we are, a number of years later, and now we're sober, and sober every day. What was that like? Hmm. A blessing, it really was. And it is a blessing because uh, I'm able to, I'm able to live, you know, without, uh, uh, 
drugs and alcohol. I said I want to, man. Yeah, I'm able to deal without, uh, I'm able to live and enjoy life and people. And um, I don't have to um, hide behind uh, false pride and, you know, uh, the life of crime. And it's, 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 it's and like family, you know, my grandson and, oh, uh, it's, 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 it's great, you know. Congratulations, Michael, on 27 years of sobriety. Thank you. We know that your story goes beyond a successful recovery story. Okay. And when we return, we're going to talk to you a little bit more about what you're doing now to help others. Thank you very much. We'll be right back. Opening for Aretha Franklin was just historic for me. I mean, it was because I'm staying clean and sober. Welcome to My Healthy Mind. The show that dares to talk about mental health matters that touch nearly every family. Each week you'll meet guests who share their stories, hear from local experts, and learn about resources that may help. And so I was in a committee meeting at the House of Representatives when I realized that my daughter had autism. We need to take the stigma away from mental health issues. No topics about mental health and wellness are off limits on our show. Let's talk about it on My Healthy Mind. Welcome back to My Healthy Mind. Today we're talking about drug abuse, addiction, and mental health. We've learned from Dr. Connell that drug addiction can be caused by many factors. Our guest, Michael Brock, has shared his story of addiction and recovery, and he told us about the treatments that have been instrumental to him finding his way. Only 10% of drug addicts actually seek professional help, but of those, up to 60% can successfully recover. Dr. Connell explains. Sometimes it takes more than one application of treatment in order for somebody to be fully ready to imbibe the teachings and the, and the, the coping mechanisms and so forth. Everything flows from the decision until the person decides, but how do they get to that decision? When I was talking to Michael, he said, it's a process and it's okay to be in that process, not shame yourself. Because if you shame yourself, you'll feel disqualified, like you don't deserve to win and you won't let yourself win. So it's so important to forgive yourself when you falter and go back at it again. Clearly, the most important factor in sustained recovery is for addicts to seek help, professional help, because addiction is too big to tackle alone. Through professional intervention, Michael Brock actually went from having a serious problem to being part of the solution, helping others on the road to recovery. So having been involved in drugs for so long, in the streets, running from drug dealers, beaten, mm -hmm. wasn't that scary at times? Very. I'm so glad you asked, Mike. Uh, I remember doing a song for the city of Detroit and we were shooting a video. We were outside, out front on Woodward Avenue and. Uh, a lot of people around, and I heard my, Michael, Michael, and it just reminded me of the past that you spoke on about getting beat up, and because this guy, he helped me out, and um, he looked at me, and he says, uh, you remember me? I said, well, vaguely, and he reminded me that uh, he was an engineer for um, the first song, one of the first songs that the Supremes did. Uh, Diana Ross, um, stopping the name of love, and I'm like, wow. And uh, so afterwards, he he um, asked me for a ride, and I gave him a ride back, and he was sort of, you know, um, uh, embarrassed that he was living in a uh, abandonment, is what we call them, a uh, place where there's no running water and. Uh, gas and lights and things like that were off, and he was squatting. And um, 
So I didn't judge him. I didn't um, say anything negative or why are you in this state of mind? And um, so every now and then from time to time, um, you know, I'll take him some water, a case of water or something like that. But we have a friendship today and he's doing a lot better. Michael, we've talked about your story and how you went from drug use to drug addiction mm -hmm. and you've reached up and you've come out of it. And what is life like for you right now, 27 years sober? Do you have a family? Is, you know, those things that are making you smile today as oh, opposed to looking over your shoulder? Yes, uh, my grandson, uh, I love him dearly, um, Caleb, uh, yes, a family. My older brother works with me. Well, you could have been anything that you wanted to, and I could tell the way you do the things you do. The way you do the things you do. But now that I have a family, a beautiful home, cars, and all that good stuff, and it, 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 it constantly reminds me of the rewards from staying clean and sober. And you get to tell your story to people who are still suffering um, in your job where you're working every day, correct? Yes, I do. How are you? I'm fine. I'm fine. How do you like working? I okay. like it, and it's a lot of help here. Yeah. I've known Michael Brock uh, a little over two years, and he currently is employed as one of my employment specialists. He brings that different aspect to a person's clinical recovery. You know, and pride and fear and stuff like that stops them and prevents them from, from, from really reaching out and asking, hey, look, I, I feel overwhelmed or I'm stressed out and I need help. Right. And you did right. that. Just his own recovery story um, shows a person that, hey, despite what you've been through, despite the numerous bar barriers and hurdles, you can overcome. But it's not so much of me telling my story, because I can tell you how I overcame my drug addiction, but unless I listen to you and be able to say, well, it's gonna be okay, that's what made the difference for me. Listening is the most important factor of sobriety. I feel. This is what I've learned over the years, Michael, because I was arrogant, egotistical, self-centered, and people didn't want to be around me because of those character defects and shortcomings. But Robert Gilreath, who's the clinical director of the Salvation Army, he would say, hey, how you doing today? What's going on? Tell me about your current events. And you sing, huh? Oh, that's nice. And is singing helping you today? In the past, it was a catalyst for drugs. Yes. And today, it seems to be something that's really soothing and motivating for you. Yes, I love to sing. I mean, I, I love music. That's, I'm from a musically inclined family. Opening for Aretha Franklin was just historic for me. I mean, it was because I'm staying clean and sober. And I realize that. And do you get positive feedback from the people, the clients that you help at your job? Yes, I do. The people at my job at Team Wellness Center suffer from um, schizophrenic, uh, uh, stress, anxiety, bipolar. And I'm able to use music to reduce the stress or the anxiety and they want to talk. Oh, so you were, you were um, on television or you sang the national anthem for the Tigers, Pistons. You're going to be opening for Earth, Wind and Fire. And, you know, and they want to, you know, they, because they know about, you know, music. And, um, but I, I let them know too, you know, I'm no different from you. You know, uh, I accomplish these things because I'm maintaining my sobriety. I'm maintaining, um, uh, I'm being more responsible. I'm coming to work. I'm here 
for you, not just me, but to help somebody. Michael, you have a very powerful story. Thank you. What advice would you give anybody who's struggling for in their addiction right now? Embrace family, be honest and open. And uh, don't be judgmental and help others because helping others helps me to overcome all of my disadvantages. And it gives me the wisdom and knowledge to once again overcome and try and do the things that's pleasing and acceptable. Oh, what a beautiful morning. Oh, what a... Ah. Woo. Michael Brock has come so far and is truly an inspiration for others who struggle with addiction to get the help that they need and speak up for themselves. When we come back, we'll explore resources that can help you and people you care about to get the help you need. Please stay tuned. Stress, depression, and severe mental illness can happen to anyone. Team Mental Health Services has been helping those struggling with these conditions in southeastern Michigan. Within 24 hours of reaching out to our team, members receive psychiatric evaluations and begin the necessary treatment for recovery. Towards the sixth court date, um, I finally stood up and said, I, I can handle this process the rest of the way. And it was all because of the motivation and encouragement I got from Team Mental Health staff. Team Mental Health Services, because we care and you can. Welcome back to My Healthy Mind. On today's show, we learned about the causes, symptoms, and treatments for drug addiction. We also learned about some of the resources that Michael Brock used to help him on his path for recovery. We've put information about these resources on our website, myhealthymind.com, so please take a look. Visiting our website could be an excellent first step toward recovery. And we want to hear from you because we want to know what topics you'd like us to discuss because we want to address the difficult topics. We know that discussing them openly will remove the stigmas and barriers that are in the way of your path for recovery and well-being. Please visit our website at MyHealthyMind.com, Twitter at MyHealthyMind, or on Facebook. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next week for another edition of My Healthy Mind. Let's talk about it.